Today, traveling the 80 miles across El Dorado County on Scenic Highway 50, the road to Tahoe takes less than two hours, but not so in the past. The same corridor has been the transportation route through the county from the Sacramento Valley over the crest of the Sierras at Echo Summit and into the Lake Tahoe Basin since 1852 with the opening of the Johnson's Cut-Off Emigrant Road during the Gold Rush. The narrow canyon of the South Fork of the American River prevented wagon travel without extensive road building. John Calhoun Johnson, looking for a road that could be opened quickly, developed the Johnson's Cut-Off by following the high ridges north of the river. Just west of Strawberry, the Johnson's Cut-Off dropped off the ridge to follow near the present-day route. One of the most challenging points on the Johnson's Cut-Off for immigrants was the ascent of Echo Summit. William Goldman described climbing from the Tahoe Valley to Echo Summit in 1852. The main summit of the mountain is 700 yards. It took 50 men of us and all the oxen we could hitch to the wagons to take 13 wagons up in two days. It's like climbing a tree, only worse. In 1858, a new road was built and the route was moved downhill, although still hundreds of feet above the river and renamed the Sacramento and Carson Valley Road. But even this realignment left much to be desired by travelers on the road to Tahoe. Adolf Sutro described his travels in 1860. A narrow cut on the side of the hills, just wide enough for two wagons to pass. Every now and then, we had to get out and walk a mile or two to enable the horses to get through. This was the same year the Pony Express crossed El Dorado County along the Highway 50 corridor. With the need for faster communication with the West, it cut time down from months to days for a letter to cross the country. Lasting only 19 months, it was replaced by the completion of the Pacific Telegraph Line, which followed the same general route. By the mid-1860s, further improvements had been made and the road was known as the Lake Tahoe Wagon Road. After the discovery of the Comstock Silver Load, there were continuous streams of traffic day and night from Sacramento to Virginia City. At times, wagons had to pull off the road and then wait for hours to pull back into the flow of traffic. More than 90 way stations were built along the way. Samuel Bowles, editor of the Massachusetts newspaper, made the journey by stage in 1865. The amount of traffic was immense. Two or three stage loads of passengers passed each way daily. Merchandise and machinery were carried in huge freight wagons holding from five to ten tons each and drawn by ten or twelve large strong horses or mules moving to the music of bells attached to their harnesses. The heavy traffic ended with the opening of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. In 1896, the Lake Tahoe Wagon Road became the first state highway in California. In 1912, most of the roads in the United States were dirt, dusty in the dry months and muddy and impassable during wet seasons. In 1913, a group of automobile industrialists began the development of the Lincoln Highway, America's first transcontinental highway. It was to be a graveled road that spanned from New York City to San Francisco across some of the most varied lands in the world. Effie Gladding traveled to the Lincoln Highway through El Dorado County in 1915. She described the drive from Placerville to Phillips in her book, Across the Continent by the Lincoln Highway. As soon as we left Placerville, we came into beautiful country. We had stretches of distant mountain views and magnificent wooded hills all about us. A mountain stream, the American River, green and foaming, roared alongside the road. The road was in excellent condition and ran through the forest for miles. Travel on the Lincoln Highway over the Sierras was not always picture perfect. It wasn't a year-round highway as it is today. On May 29, 1914, it was reported that 10,000 sheep were being driven along the highway to Lake Tahoe to expedite the breakup of the snow. Sprinkling the road with water and later oil was done to settle the blinding dust during the summer. In 1928, 
3,000 cement markers with a bronze medallion showing the profile of Abraham Lincoln were installed by the Boy Scouts across the country to mark the route. Two of these can be seen at the El Dorado County Historical Museum in Placerville, and one is on Main Street, embedded in the wall of Tortilla Flats Restaurant. You can still drive across the 1914 Lincoln Highway Weber Bridge on Forney Road, west of Placerville. Off Bass Lake Road, west of Cameron Park, you can still see what is likely the longest uninterrupted and unchanged stretch of original 1914 Lincoln Highway paving in California. The road to Tahoe we drive today was completed in the 1960s, with present day improvements continuing its transition from wagon road to highway. As you travel across El Dorado County on Lawrence Highway 50, imagine the same journey with wagon and ox teams on the Johnson Cutoff over 160 years ago during the gold rush. Then recall the bouncing stagecoach ride on the narrow road above the river on the Lake Tahoe Wagon Road. And don't forget, as you speed up the hill, the snail's pace of early automobile traffic on the Lincoln Highway in open cars with dust and mud, depending on the season, on the road to Tahoe.